More than 100,000 WhatsApp messages sent between UK ministers, officials and others have lifted the lid on how they came to impose lockdown on the population and the decision-making process behind it. And credit to The Telegraph, which is the only media outlet in the UK giving this the attention it deserves. Let's get straight to the point. While some of this is a limited hangout, some key revelations, or rather confirmations of what we already suspected, have emerged. By far the biggest. Matt Hancock wanted to quote, deploy a new COVID variant to, quote, frighten the pants off the public and ensure they complied with lockdown. Simon Case, the cabinet secretary, wanted to ramp up the fear guilt factor to force people into compliance. They considered locking up Nigel Farage because he took a photo of himself enjoying a pint in a pub less than two weeks after returning from America. They mocked travellers who were forced to hole up in quarantine hotels that were glorified prisons calling it hilarious. They introduced face masks despite being told by England's chief medical officer that there was no very strong reason to do so. They ignored positive news stories about COVID infections dropping because they wanted to prolong lockdown. So basically, everything that we said was happening at the time and were monstered and maligned by the media for doing so was happening all along. We were right. All along, there's still this myth going around that government officials facing a novel coronavirus had to take a safety first approach because the situation was unprecedented and the risks unknown. That's total BS. These messages once again illustrate how they knew from the very beginning the virus wasn't as big a threat as they were telling the general public it was. And they deliberately chose to exaggerate the threat to browbeat the public into complete submission. This approach was also decided upon right from the very start by government advisory bodies, who as Laura Dodsworth's state of fear exposed, deployed unethical totalitarian methods of mind control their words, not mine. To increase the, quote, perceived level of personal threat that the virus poses because, quote, a substantial number of people still do not feel sufficiently personally threatened. And what of this weapons-grade bell end? In January 2020, Hancock was bragging about how his career could be propelled into the next league by the pandemic. Now he's prancing around on reality TV shows like nothing happened. Well, hello. He's a narcissistic attention-seeking little prick grifting off of a nation's pain and suffering. And he thinks it's funny. Well, I'm not fucking laughing. Critics have accused Hancock of being drunk on power, calling for him to face questions in the commons. Is that really enough? Hancock and his ilk weaponized behavioral psychology to traumatize an entire nation. Their unethical, deliberately exaggerated fear-mongering terrified the population into complete paralysis. Ruined relationships, missed funerals, serious untreated illnesses, a mental health catastrophe, children literally offing themselves. Many serious researchers assert that lockdown will, in the long term, claim more lives than COVID itself. Should the people who are knowingly responsible for all that, be allowed to just get away with it with merely a slap on the wrist? And will the general public even care, given that polls show more Brits than not think the government's handling of COVID wasn't strict enough? Lock me down harder, Daddy! Get early access to videos, exclusive live streams, and personally DM me. You've seen how much I get demonetized all the time. Well, this is how you support me. By subscribing at pauljosephwatson.locals.com. Please click the link in the description.